welcome. Um, this is nothing but fun and Bible talk, and I'm Emily Trier. I'm so glad you're here. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, so let's, I, I was just sitting here thinking um, that I need to sit in the microphone. Um, but no, I was thinking, you know, there are often times, I mean, there have been several times that I've been really excited to um, turn on this mic and tell you what I've learned. Um, and I'm really, today is one of those days. I'm not saying I mean, I feel like that every time, guys. No, um, I don't always feel that way. <laughs> Sorry, Lord. Um, but because sometimes, I mean, I think we need to know, sometimes I'm just telling you what the Bible says, and, and I don't have any commentary to add. Um, that's rare, but, you know, and, and sometimes I feel like I have to stretch it a little bit. Um, sometimes I don't fully understand what I'm sharing either, and, and that's not to make me, to discre- I'm not trying to discredit myself. I'm just saying that the Lord is still working on me. Um, he's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. That's you know. You, did y'all ever sing that in Vacation Bible School? Anyway, um, we don't sing the same kinds of songs that we did when I was growing up, or when my mom was growing up, for that matter. Um, anyway, that, I digress. Okay, um, but I'm excited to do- to talk to you today. You know, we've been talking about women and and some of the characters that that were in the Old Testament. So far, we're in, just been in the Old Testament, and today we're still going to also be in the Old Testament. But um, we've got some we've got some pretty good, you know, uh, New Testament um, truth coming as well, and, and examples of strong women. So, but today we're just talking about women and the roles that we have, and some important women that that have come across, you know, history. Um, and so today we're going to talk about Proverbs thirty one. And you know that that, uh, you may not be aware of it, Uh, you may not know this passage, um, but you will see in, you know, in Christian circles, perhaps, um, and in t-shirts, Christian t-shirts that, you know, Proverbs 31 woman, um, and that, and that kind of thing. And so I wanted us to like dig into that. And I was like, uh, duh, of course, this goes right into what we're talking about. Thank you, Lord, for um, making this this chapter in, in the Bible that um, it tells us exactly what we're supposed to be and what we're capable of. Um, and I've had mixed feelings about it. So I'm going to, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to read it and then um, we'll talk and then we'll talk. And I'm going to tell you where I started out and, and how I ended up. Okay. So here's Proverbs 31. It's not the entire chapter. It's just, it starts in verse 10. So it's um, Proverbs 31, 10 through 31, I believe. Yes. So here, here we go. Let's listen. A wife of noble character, who can find? She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She is like the merchant ships bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it is still dark She provides food for her family and portions for her servant girls. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her tasks. She sees that her trading is profitable, and her lamp does not go out at night. In her hand, she holds the distaff and grasps the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. When it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. She makes coverings for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected at the city gate, where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them, and supplies the merchants with sashes. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom, and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her the reward she has earned and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. And I know you all are thinking, Emily, you just described yourself. (laughs) 
I'm not sure that my children arise and call me blessed. <laughs> well, they probably do, but they arise and say, Mom, you are so blessed because you have us. <laughs> we bring the blessings to you, Mama. <laughs> so, okay. So at first, when I was reading, and I have always thought these are just, you know, this is women. And and I tell you, honestly, what what, what strikes me is that what well what I've always thought I should say is that I read this and thought look nobody's putting baby in the corner right women can do whatever they want they can buy and sell real estate they can run their household and a business they can uh, make a vineyard they can sew they can cook they can manage their household they stay up late they have all the things covered women can do anything and in fact, this is what this the Proverbs 31 says, women, this is what you, but there are few and far between. You can't find a woman this good. Right? But I thought to myself, this is all, this is, yes, women can do anything. They, she, they, they are not, they don't just have to stay at home. Yes, they're, they're keepers of the home. They can be at home. But that doesn't mean that that's the end all be all of who they are. They can do it all. And that's what I thought about. And so then, you know, and that's what it says in a lot of the commentaries that I was reading. Until I got to the Net Bible. And, y'all, that's my new English translation. And it has fantastic footnotes in it. And it has the, it'll tell you the, all of the um, Aramaic, Hebrew, and Greek um, grammar that you don't understand. I don't understand it. Someone else might. But I have to skip over those sentences in the notes. But they have fantastic notes, and they're saying, this is not really talking about a woman, because this there's no way that, that any single woman could do all of this, right? This is surely talking about uh, the lady wisdom, meaning wisdom, and she's given feminine attributes, okay? And I could get behind that, of course. <laughs> of course, wisdom is female, duh. I could tell you, could have told you that before. I, you know, and, and there are some similarities, and that's cool and all. Look, that's really interesting. If you want to go that route, and I'm not sure how many other, I didn't do a deep, deep dive into the internet because I was about to. I really was about to get on the Google and and see what everyone else in the world had to say about Proverbs 31 because I was sure that there were going to be some nuts out there that did that said some things that I did not agree with and then I was sure that there was going to be some far out stuff that I was going to be like what now I don't understand what you're saying and then there was going to be the stuff that I I you know thought that I I could probably find things to back my thoughts up and I was just about to get on my computer. But first I had texted my pastor. Y'all know Dr. Shane Green. Um, he's been a guest on, um, and I, I hope that we'll have him back soon. I have to ask him. So Shane, no, he's not listening. Um, <laughs> not that he doesn't enjoy this program. I'm sure he does. Um, but he is not, he is less technologically savvy than I am. So if, if I want him to listen, I have to send him the link. And I don't always do that. Um, but I, I respect him just so very much. And I texted him while I was reading and studying. And right before I got on the Internet, his, his answer came back to me. And I was like, reading his answer and then going back and finishing up, I was like, I don't need to look anything else up. When whatever, I'm going to tell you what he said, but it just clicked. It just made things click. And, and I saw what the very most important part of this is. First of all, looking at this, this woman that the writer of Proverbs is talking about, um, she's, first of all, she's pretty well off. She's got servants. She wears fine linen and purple. Those were the colors and the materials of the wealthy. She has the means to consider a, a, a field, a piece of real estate, and buy it. And, and she's able to, you know, conduct business. I mean, it takes some capital to be able to do that. 
So this isn't necessarily something that every single woman can be. Not every woman has the means to do this. Does that mean that she's not a noble woman? Hmm? No. That, that's my first thing. Who can, and the other thing is this, this is a really high standard. <laughs> Let's, let's think about your kids. Or if you don't have kids, think about somebody that you went to school with who always had the best project, whose mom was the room mom, who signed up for every sign-up thing, who made cookies for all the things, who could sew and make the costumes, who was just cute, precious. All the Valentines that came from that, that, that family were just perfect. Um, there was a gift for every holiday. You'd come home with something on, I don't know, Flag Day. No, Flag Day where, it, where it's the summer. But you'd come home some, with something for, for President's Day. And, of course, Halloween. And, of course, maybe even Labor Day. But for sure, Thanksgiving and Christmas. Valentine's already mentioned, you know, there are just all these, there was always something, right? I am not that mom. (laughs) Now, I can on the fly come up with a good Valentine. I have been known to do a good Valentine, but not because it was the desire of my heart, but because I felt like I needed to keep up, right? Right? And the the brilliance and the beauty of being a a mom of four and the baby, poor Mac, I mean, poor Mac, I don't care (laughs) anymore about what the other moms are doing, okay? So poor Mac, (laughs) he gets the store-bought, yeah, just pass these out, buddy. He doesn't get the cutesy things that Bo and Jake did. Van even, I mean, Van may be a little, but really it was petering out, okay? Um, Van and and Bo and Jake, they they had the cutest things, and I worked (laughs) really hard at it. (laughs) I mean, when Jake was in second grade and Bo was in third grade, it was our first year at Clubview. We had just moved them to that school, and for um, Valentine's Day, I decided that I was making cupcakes for both classes and the teacher's workroom and that the boys were going to handwrite all of their Valentines. We were not doing store-bought anything. Y'all, I made cupcakes and made cupcakes and made cupcakes. They had the cute little flags in them. They had sprinkles. I think they tasted good. Um... I was so sick of cupcakes. I, I mean, it took me all night. I was exhausted. I was exhausted. Took them all to school only to get a phone call that Jake had thrown up everywhere. <laughs> Maybe he ate too many cupcakes. I don't know. But I worked my tail off. Now, I did not do that really again. I learned my lesson <laughs> that that was a lot of work. The things that this woman in, in Proverbs 31 is doing, wow. That's a lot. That is a really high standard. That's a really high standard that she's trying to live up to. And it says she's worth, I mean, a wife of noble character. Verse 10 says it, a wife of noble character, who can find? (laughs) It's really rare. (laughs) Does that mean that the, the rest of us are just, we're okay? No, that is not what this means at all. So I, I, so I was like, maybe because this is a hard thing to live up to, maybe this, this, this argument that this is about wisdom, about the lady wisdom, maybe this is more true. So when I texted my pastor, I was like, Psalm, Proverb, not Psalm, Proverb 31 is about, isn't about a real woman, is it? And he answered back, let's see, where's my phone? I love what he answered back. So I'm going to read it to you because I don't want to mess it up. He said, not about a specific one, but case could be made for general one. That is how most interpret. Harder to explain it if someone thinks this is allegory, like Lady Wisdom. If read with the lens of Proverbs, which is best, which, no, wait. If read with the lens of Proverbs, which is best seen as advice from father to son, it makes sense as to what type of wife or woman is best. And that 
helps. Because I abandoned the thought that this is about wisdom. Okay, it is about, because it's written as seen from advice. It's best seen as advice from father to son. And of course, we are going to set the bar for our children really, really high when it comes to finding a mate. Because I'm going to tell you, I need to find these young ladies that, that, are, that are meant to be. Number one, I need help, and I, I welcome them. I can't wait to have daughters. I can't wait to have some daughters. Um, but, I mean, also, on the other hand, these are my babies. I mean, hello, Missy, you better step off. You better get yourself together, right? You got to get yourself together because nobody is good enough for my baby boy, right? I mean, that's how we feel. I mean, and for girls, I mean, I can I can only imagine what uh, that there are some daddies out there that was like, uh-uh, not my baby. Uh-uh. I just as soon she stayed single. <laughs> no one is good enough for her, right? So if we look at it through that lens, which I really, really like, and as I sat here and studied, because, I mean, look, yeah, she, these are some great things. Because a wife of noble character means a worthy woman. And if you change it to worthy woman, I mean, that's all of us, right? I, I mean, she, when it says that she is like the merchant ships, she goes wherever she needs to go. When she needs something, she goes to wherever she needs to go to get it. She's diligent in it. She plans, when, she, when it says she considers a field and buys it, she plans carefully. She makes wise investments. When she sets about her work vigorously, she clothes herself in might. She's strong. These are all things we can do, y'all. If we look at it like that, uh, when she sees her training is her trading is profitable, her merchandise is good, and she knows it. And and so her lamp does not go out at night. It means she burns the midnight oil if she needs to. If she needs to stay up and get some some things done, she will. But it can also be her light doesn't go out. Her lamp, the light that she is to her family, does not go out. Does not dim. She is who she is. She's the rock. She's the one at home. She's the one that dusts them off. Make sure everybody's got the clothes they need. Remember, if she's not worried about the snow because she's prepared. They're not going to be cold. Mama's got your jacket. Okay? She earns and gives. I mean, she earns money, and she also is charitable and gives it. It's like she holds it with an open hand. She shares. She might be wealthy, but she's charitable. And, and when you talk about wealth, does it really mean the wealth that we're thinking of? To be charitable, does it have to be monetary? No, not at all. Not at all. Okay? Okay. Where he ta- so his her husband is respected at the city gate, so he's one of the elders of the city. He he's important in the city. Okay, she adds to his reputation. And I don't know about you, but I like to I like to hope, or I do hope, that I add to Jim's good reputation. There's only been a couple of times where I think I might have people might go, "Ooh, poor Jim." <laughs> I hope for the most part they're like, oh, Jim's a lucky guy. <laughs> I hope people don't go, poor Jim. He's got his hands full with that one. Um, I hope people don't say that. I want to be somebody that that brings good to my husband, that doesn't bring harm in his life, that brings good. I should have Jim on. No, we're not having Jim on. He'll be too honest. Um so she does not eat the bread of idleness. It means that she works even though she doesn't really have to. She's not sitting around and eating bonbons. Although the woman that this this passage is 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 referencing, she could. She could. But she's a hard worker. And she does things. That does not mean as a mom, 
as a woman who has been a stay-at-home mom, remember here comes that trad wife thing again. I am a traditional wife. I have stayed home and taken care of my kids and been the keeper of the home. I have felt very convicted in that. Okay, that was the goal, and that is something that Jim and I discussed before we got married. We did not, it wasn't like I was blindsided. It wasn't like, and I had friends that, and Jim, I think I've talked about this before. Um, I In one of these, they all start to run together, guys. I know that I've said this recently in the past few weeks, but I, I mean, I had friends that were concerned that I was giving up my stuff my dreams and my goals and my career if to settle down and marry Jim. It doesn't, I did. I gave up some things, but I got it something better in return. But just because this is talking about a woman that works and who does it all, and there are women out there who do it and who do it well, but this isn't saying that you have to be that. Because whatever you work at and you work diligently at, that's working hard. I work real hard at my needlepoint. <laughs> Just because. And one of these days, I'm going to actually get it all finished and give them as gifts. See, there's the charity part. And being charitable and doing things for others. Yeah, I, I love to, but I love to feed people. I tell you what, this past weekend we had, I don't know, 15 teenagers and, and college age men, high school and college age young men at our house. I, it was fun though. I love it. I love it. I love to have them in. I love to see them all. And I don't want necessarily need to be a part of the conversation, but I just like to listen. I just like to watch them all get along and have a good time and feed them. Jim had a friend. He was with us. You know, we, we always need backup, um, especially for that many boys out at the farm. Um, but Jim was like, Emily, can you, because Jim does most of the cooking out there because it all involves a grill. And there, I'm not saying I can't grill. I'm sure I could if I really wanted to, but here's the thing. I don't want to. So, but I make this, Jim calls it white crack. It's just a horseradish sauce, okay? Um, and it's just horseradish, prepared horseradish, sour cream, some garlic powder, salt and pepper. That's all it is. And I mixed it, and Jim's friend was there, and Jeremy was like, you know, you did this in about 10 minutes. When we tried to copy it and do it when they're at duck camp, he said, it takes us an hour. We can't figure this out. You just dumped a bunch of stuff in here. And to hear the boys go, oh, Miss Emily, this is so good. I love that. I love that. Those are the gifts and the things that I'm working hard to do and that I'm sharing and being charitable with it. It's not I'm buying fields and selling merchandise. Okay? But the most important thing of this whole thing happens in verse 30. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Remember with Esther, we talked about how she ended up being the queen because she was pretty, because she caught the eye of the king. She found favor in his eyes because of the way she looked. And I'm not saying Esther wasn't a noble woman and couldn't do all these other things. She had a fine character. But charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised because guess what? Charm is deceptive. Anybody can be charming. You're trying to get on somebody's good side. I mean, if you're buttering somebody up, you can, you know, some of us are better at it than others. I like to think I'm pretty good at it. But, I mean, so that could change. I mean, you could change your mind and all of a sudden you're not very charming anymore. So that's deceptive. That's what that means. And beauty is fleeting. And duh, we know that, that what that means. 
we're not always going to look 30 or 20 or 15, or we're not going to have the bodies that we had when we were 18 and just graduated from high school. We're not going to do that. I mean, I'm kind of glad. I'm not opposed to the body that I have now. But it won't always look as good, and I won't always feel as good. Beauty is fleeting. But do you know what's more charming and more beautiful? It's a woman who fears the Lord. Because that sticks. That sticks. Let me tell you what. So the net, my net Bible said, this is a strong declaration. I love this so much. This is a strong declaration against relying on the emotional impulse of attraction. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting. Follow your heart amounts to follow whatever gives you a charmed feeling while ignoring moral constraints and potential consequences. Charm is deceptive. Beauty is fleeting. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. The most important thing of all of that's been said in Proverbs 31 is find yourself a woman who fears the Lord. Because if she fears the Lord, she is prepared. She's going to be able to make things happen. Because she... I can't, you, when you fear the Lord and you have your priorities straight there, everything else is going to fall into the balance. I'm not saying it's always going to be good because I guarantee you this woman who works as hard as she does and has this many people to manage and has this many business things going on, her life is not easy and it is not smooth sailing all the time. Because sometimes she has to go get on that merchant ship and find what she needs. There are hiccups along the way. But if your best quality is that you fear the Lord, all the other ones are what? I mean, all the other ones are just gravy, right? My daddy says, you got... He's, what is, oh, I, oh, let me get it right. My daddy says, you've got a, bis, a gravy train with biscuit wheels. A woman who fears the Lord is the gravy train. All the other attributes that you like are just the biscuit wheels that go along with it. <laughs> just think of yourself as that, that gravy train with biscuit wheels. Yeah, this is what I want to tell my sons. Yes, baby, I know you want her to be pretty. And that's what I told one of Bob's friends when we moved him to Statesboro. I said, look, I feel like a young lady, if a girlfriend or, or something could come along side bow, that would be so helpful. If some other female were helping him besides myself, because he only listens to me for, you know, up to a point. I really feel like she could be helpful in the cleanliness factor. And the clothes staying manageable, right? Not wanting to smell for her, very powerful. And I told his friend, I said, look, I don't care if she's, we're not looking for, I mean, she doesn't have to be pretty. We just want her to be sweet and kind. And Bo said, wait, 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 mom, I, I, I do care what she looks like. <laughs> I'm not saying <laughs> That all of us women who fear God are ugly. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> what I'm saying is that that fear of the Lord is more important. So, boys, if you hear this, let's find a strong Christian young lady. Let's find one that fears the Lord. And that fear of the Lord brings obedience to him. That, that fear of the Lord is going to make her priorities be what they need to be. To love the Lord, to love you, to take care of you, and to take care of her other business, whatever it might be. 
whether it's being a keeper of the home or being a CEO of a multi-million dollar corporation. Wherever she's called to go, as long as fear of the Lord is first, everything else is going to fall into place. Are you that type of woman? Are you that worthy woman, that noble character? Do you fear the Lord? Because guess what? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom. That's how wisdom fits back in there. God says that once you figure out that, that once you figure out that you need the Lord and that you have to have this healthy fear of him that causes respect and obedience and reverence, that's the beginning of wisdom. And what does wisdom do? It helps you make the right decisions. It helps you to discern what's best. So be a woman who fears the Lord. Because Jesus already loves you.